Good morning, 20 past nine on a Wednesday morning, 24th of May. We've got a few cloths in here. When we get a few cloths in, um, you have expressed an interest in seeing what people are buying. So here we are again. Um, we're very fortunate to have all this work to do. This is only the tip of the iceberg, but there's some interesting stuff here. And I'm sure your eyes getting drawn to this. Come back to that in a minute. Okay. What have we got? We've got a lot of the classics because they never go away. They always stay there. And I'll prove that to you because I'll show you them. But we do have some interesting ones, okay? This fellow. I know what you're thinking. Is he serious? She serious? They are deadly serious. This is going to be made into a club blazer for the Middlesex Cricket Club, MCC, to you and I. Um, what do I think of it? Yeah, it, it's quite nice cloth, it's utilitarian cloth. Let's just say it's going to turn heads, but it's gonna look fun, isn't it? I mean, if, if you wanna work on something that's interesting, how about this starter for 10? So we're really excited about that. That's, that's gonna bring a smile to a lot of places. We need to get that folded properly. But um, an interesting one. It, it's not from one of the London merchants, okay? It's a, it's a specialist company that produced garments like that. Um, fun, interesting. Now then, a couple of vintage Rolls Royces. Can you remember this, okay? Um, on one of my videos, I did a little bit of a ratch through the shop. And we pulled this up and we have no idea how we have it. I mean, this cloth's gone back there 50, 60, 70 years. But a chap in Boston said, I like the look of that. Could you bring it? So we did. He ordered it. And I'm really glad he ordered it. And of course I would be, we've sold a beautiful blazer, but quite honestly, why a cloth as stunning as this has been left on the shelf, we do not know. It's a Reed and Taylor vintage cloth. So Reed and Taylor have been gone for, I don't know, 20, 25 years. Um, it's got a set of blazer buttons. And here's our posty. Hi dear, how are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you. Wonderful, Thanks thank you very much. Nothing staged here. It's got a certificate saying this is a limited bone. It's got these beautiful Reed and Taylor buttons, which we'll show you. Um, but how, how interesting is this? It was specially woven for Henry Poole. Okay, by Reed and Taylor, Henry Poole. How did we get it? God only knows. But what I will tell you is, which the customer found as soon as he laid his hands on it, this is something really, really special. Um, it has got such a lovely handle to it. Very dark, almost midnight, but what an elegant blazer this is gonna make. Um, just the provenance, having something so unique um, is a real treat. I mean, look at that, the old Reed and Taylor seal on there. Um, interesting, as I say, there's even lining for it, look. You know, uh, interesting it was done for Henry Poole. We don't know the stories behind all of these things, but when you've been around for 160 odd years, you're gonna pick things up, aren't you? So, nice one. I can move quickly on to this one. The reason that this stands out so much is it is Reed and Taylor. Now we have a client, unusually in Boston again, who said, um, I came across this on an auction site. Um, have a look at it, tell me what you think. It was in England where it was for sale. <clears throat> and we said, well, it looks pretty good. And we bought it for him. And it is a stunning tweed. It, It's, it's typical Reed and Taylor, which is always interesting, but actually super elegant. I mean, it's a real shame they're not around anymore. Um, 
I know on film this is not going to do this justice. This looks like a classic sort of tweed sports coat, but it isn't. It's, it is a tweed weave, but believe me, this is so sophisticated. Uh, it's got a stunning handle and the colors really unusual. It's got all sorts of different colors in it. Um, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's just gorgeous. And it's again, I say that with pangs of sadness in some respects that this lovely company it is no more but what a delight again what age could this be i've no idea i'm guessing by the feel i reckon it's about 25 30 year old i don't think it's super old uh, but it's it's class really nice okay now then there's three pairs of cords here who do the cords come from brisbane moss fabulous company Look at that blue, isn't that beautiful? I've said this before in my videos, um, on my bespoke work, I always generally like to cut corduroy upside down. So I know I've spoke about this before, it's because down the piece, you get a richer blue. If you put the pile down, so it feels smooth, it gets shinier. Can you see the difference? So that's sort of shinier. It is the correct way. If you brush it, the pile goes down. If you do it that way, look at the change in color. Okay, but, but you do get the pile. So I always make that clear to people because as you can imagine, some people could say, you've cut this the wrong way around. I don't like the pile standing up. Okay, but we do everything for a reason. So lovely blue. This pair, cornflower yellow, may look familiar to you. Yours truly loves wearing these in the winter. And I'm pleased to say that these are for me. Okay. Um, I would tell you, you know, get excited and see what they're gonna look like, but you're sick to death of seeing them on me. Look at the videos, you'll see me wearing them all the time. They are lovely. I love wearing a pair of cords like that. And this pair, you're gonna say it's got more money than cents. It's going to the head. These are for me too. These are bad, aren't they? These are my red ones. Look, I don't have much, I promise you. I worked really hard and after all this labor, I'm gonna get two pairs of cord trousers, but these are gonna be lovely. I, I really can't wait. So there you go, that's a bit of self-indulgence from me. Okay. Carlos Barbera from Huddersfield Fine Worsted. This is very elegant, very unusual as well, getting a red check. But look at that fella, I love this kind of washed look. These colours, if they were left without this washed look, would be, just be too strong. Um, but that's really, really rich. Isn't that gorgeous? Made in Italy. You know I love Italian cloth. I'll say no more than that, but it's pretty good actually. It's got a lovely bit of body to it. Barbera, old name. Um, gonna look really elegant. I think that's going to Los Angeles. Okay, what else have we got? This looks a classic. Um, where's the label on this one? Ah, right, deep inside, there you go. Never mind. Made in Huddersfield, England. Super fine, all wool, Dugdale Brothers. Hey, up, Dugdale Brothers, 5 Northumberland Street, Huddersfield, Yorkshire. Um, this has been around forever. There is nothing unique about this, apart from it's the real deal. It's just proper quality, a beautiful Prince of Wales with a blue over check. Um, God knows how many of these I've cut over the years. God knows how many people are so delighted by this suit. I mean, that is, everybody should have one of these. I have one of these, can you remember? Dugdale Brothers actually, but mine's a heavier job. Mine's the Vantage. But that, this is a, is this needle ready or something? I don't know, but it's, yeah, it's 11 ounces. It's on the button. We'll find it out. We're professionals here. 
Um, yeah, oh, Doug Dale having a run. Look at this. Classic grey from Charcoal from Doug Dale Brothers. Made in Huddersfield. Um, what's not to like? Okay. Super fine old wool worsted. Made in Huddersfield, England. Um, falls in the same category. Um, I was cutting these things 40 years ago. I'll be cutting well, I'll be cutting them in 40 years' time. Bloody hope not. Um, somebody will be cutting these in 40 years' time. It's not going to be me, but somebody will be. Um, just so gorgeous. Who is this for? Remind me. All right, okay. Yeah, fabulous. So this is going to the northeast United States as well. Wonderful, wonderful cloth. Okay, this looks a bit glamorous. Yes, this is glamorous. This is off to Los Angeles, Holland and Sherry. Uh, wow, look at this. This is super light. This is gorgeous. What is this? Mm. Super 130s, really nice. Yeah, Holland and Sherry. That, what a lovely, sort of a neutrally color, but very subtle blue and tan in there. Blue and tan always looks nice. Um, I always feel tan and brown is, is easier to manage. I prefer greens, but greens are harder to make work. I have green suits and I just don't wear them because I can never put the shirts and ties together properly. This is lovely. That's absolutely gorgeous. And I know who that's going for and he's going to love that. Now, let's pull up something else. Harrison's uh, timeless bit of kit this this is beautiful this is a woolen cashmere for an overcoat there's probably not a lot to see the handle oh my god that is beautiful that's stunning actually oh no it gets it gets better Lum's golden bale and cashmere that's about as good as it gets, quite frankly. Um, and it shows. Golden Bale is always a bit of a favorite of mine. As it's not the swankiest, softest cloth in the world, but it's the quality of the yarn they use in the first place, which always has this elegance. Even this, look how this is laying up. This will cut beautifully, but believe me, the cashmere in there, that's absolute perfection, that is. That's gonna be a top coat, not super heavy. Uh, I think it's about 18 ounce, um, but really, really nice for the world today. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I wish you were here. I wish you could reach in because the, the beauty is the handle of that. Okay, what else have we got? Lesser and Son. <coughs> Okay, just one of cla classic lessers fabrics here. Um, oh, it's like an 11 12, it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Made in England, especially for lessers and sun. Again, we're falling into the, the bracket here of I was cutting these 40 years ago, somebody will be cutting them in 40 years' time. This is a beautiful blue, a little bit lighter, a bit more Air Forcey, uh, but still got that dark weave going through there, which is gonna really ground it. It'll always look elegant. I mean, these things I love. Yeah, I mean, how can you not like these things? I do this for a living and and every now and then when I'm traveling around and I meet people and I find what they do for a living and everything, it's always interesting. But how lucky are we to indulge ourselves in things like this? Something so tactile. Um, I'm just having a moment. I'm having a moment. Moment's over. Okay. <clears throat> More. Carlos Barbera. We're having an... Italian invasion here. 
Huddersfield fine worsted. Very like the red. Different colour to it. Um, but again, I have to say, I like the, the kind of washed look. I mean, the handle is superb. Made in Italy. Being made to eat my words, aren't I? I mean, that is beautiful. The thing is, the Italians do make interesting lighter cloths. Um, the, the British market is different. It would be different. I mean, have a look outside our window. It's summertime, okay? Um, I've got my sleeves rolled up to here, but it's not that hot. Um, so our lighter weights are never quite as interesting as the Italian cloths. I will give them that. I mean, that's, that's stunning. <coughs> one way, though. It, why is it one way? Well, the reason why it's one way is if you, look, if you look at the check, it's not got a symmetrical check. So the way I cut it, I read up. So the blue check is on the bottom. So we've got to make sure that everything is one way on this we do tip things up and down all cutters do it if you can do it on the cloth but you can't do it on this because of that check so uh, okay this looks this looks like no nonsense have a look at that fella dark blue i know who this is actually this is the lovely charming fella who's who's recently gone down the the uh bespoke double breasted look on a couple of things this is gorgeous look at this dark navy with like a double pinstripe from Dugdale Brothers. Okay, yeah, this is going to the southwest of the United States. It, back in the classics again, okay? Um, if, you, if you look at this little pile of cloth, isn't it interesting how the same old favorites keep coming up? And they always will. Right, I better break. I better, I better bring something up that's different. This feels interesting. Lessers ah. Okay, I'm going to tell a story about this. This gentleman came to us, and he ordered a beautiful golden bale, um, dark grey bird's eye. Now, a dark grey bird's eye is available from everybody, but a dark grey bird's eye in Lum's Golden Bale is something really special. Unfortunately, that cloth ran out of stock. They can no longer get the yarn at the moment. Hopefully things will change. Um, so we tried to duplicate it. We said, never mind, it's a dark grey bird's eye. We'll find a dark grey bird's eye. Um, but we couldn't find a dark grey bird's eye that equaled it, quite frankly. So that caused great disappointment. And when, when you come up against the buffers and something is not going to happen, it's sometimes better just to turn direction. So this chap changed direction. He's ordered a nice coat and he has a pair of trousers as well. Is this the trousers? Yes. So we've got a golden bale here, exclusively for, for lessers. Uh, and this is just, Fabulous. I mean, God, what a gorgeous cloth. I mean, just even feeling that is just, I mean, the check, that's timeless. That's wonderful. And he's pairing it up with a nice pair of grey trousers, again, from Lesser's Lum's Golden Bale. Okay. Um, isn't that gorgeous together? What a lucky man. I'd like something like that. I'll never get anything like that, will I? No, you won't. Right. Popular people. Got a few going through at the moment. Uh, you can see the richness. And um, that's the culprits. Fox Brothers. Great flannels. Um, really good flannels. This is the... Which one is this? Is it their classic flannel? Okay, woven in England since 1772, Fox Brothers, yeah. So this is their classic flannel, which is <clears throat> reasonably priced and beautiful quality. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Some cloths are a bit more fashionable and sometimes there's a bit more conversation. Everyone gets very excited and the price can creep up. This is, this is honest stuff, okay? West of England flannel, just beautiful there's a phone somebody will get that um 
they do a cashmere version. Um, the fox is going to hate me for this, but it's too pricey. This is too good, and the cashmere and woolen version isn't good enough, in my opinion. Um, but there you go, look, I've upset people, fair enough. But if you want the real deal, Fox Brothers, West of England, flannel, gorgeous. What else have we got? Claire's pulling her face. She didn't like me saying that. Who cares, eh? Right. Ah, this is lovely. This is just one of Harrison's. Lovely lamb's wool. Super fine. Just as an everyday sports coat. Herringbone, mid tan, not too dark. He's over in California, sun shines. Beautiful, really timeless. Isn't it incredible that people buy clothing? That's not incredible, it makes perfect sense. But they buy stuff that's gonna look good in 25 years. Um, this is nice. Do you know what this will be? This will probably be a fox woolen cashmere. That'll bloody teach me, won't it? Okay, let's have a look. Got them all tangled up here. Right, quite a short length though. Who's this for? Fox Brothers. Um, all right, yeah. So this is a just like a sports coat. Kind of got a bluey, <coughs> bluey grey to it. Um, Fox Brothers face side, always on the inside. Again, that's really, really, really nice. Made in England. Does it happen uh, to contain any cashmere? No, there's no cashmere in here. In fact, look at that, there isn't even a selvedge on it. Maybe it's not from Fox. I think it is, it's got their label on it. Um, what's the point if you can't speak the truth, eh? Um, that's beautiful. Yeah, Fox Brothers, nice. Uh, this, looks, this looks super classic. <coughs> Woven in England for H. Lesser and Son. Eh, dear. Gorgeous. Navy herringbone. Um, absolutely timeless. What have we got here? H. Lesser and Son. Yeah, this is it. This is this is staying here in the UK. Uh, this is getting made into a double breasted, I think. Yeah, beautiful. Timeless stuff again. Yep, back to the same old story. Uh, this looks an interesting one. W Bill. Come on, get a grip. Okay, the old House of Tweeds. Um, woven in Scotland exclusively for W Bill London. Phoenix Jacket in Rage, which again is Harrison's. Um, wow, it's nice, isn't it? You can see that, yeah. The, I love how the check is just that step bigger. Um, oh yeah, God, that's fab. That really is. That's lovely. They're getting good at this. Definitely getting good at this. All right, so there's that one. I'm making a real mess here. <clears throat> We've got three classics here. Well, actually, two classics. Okay, this is off to a very good pal of mine in Boston. Big Jake, look at that. Ooh, that's got a bit of a look to it, hasn't it? Is this Glorious 12th? Yeah. So he's had Porter and Harding, Glorious 12th. It's part of the Harrisons group. Um, you know, they have Lessers, they have Porter and Harding, you know, Smith Woolens, etc. That's gorgeous. A little bit of a sheen to it, which will disappear when it's being made because there's a finishing on the cloth which will often give that little bit of a shine so always be aware of that when you look at cloths new and in bunches they <clears throat> if they appear to have a little bit of a shine uh, there's a very good chance that's going to diminish by the time you actually receive the suit okay because this is just wool uh, there's no mohair or anything there or silk so this little bit of a sheen will disappear that's lovely crisp refreshing blue and i like this big ball check on there in the sort of yellowy color because this is big lad he's big and he's going to carry that so well 
That's gorgeous. I just hope I've got enough for him. <laughs> I've cut my fingers on this stuff before. Cut my fingers, you know what that means? That's a saying that you've not ordered enough cloth. You've cut your fingers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of my favourites here. Harrison's again. I can feel Mark Dunsford lining up the pints of beer for me in the Mason's Arms. Super fine lambs, wool and angora. Okay. Nice bit of rabbit fur. Do you want me to tell you something scandalous? Harrison's will hate me for this. In the trade, we call this poor man's cashmere because the angora and wool mixture, I mean, I've been telling for a long time, it, it feels like cashmere. That's, that's all there is to it. It has a great handle. It makes up really well. It doesn't pill. Um, it, it, I mean, you can see the elegance in that, but the angora just gives it a magic handle. I mean, it, it represents really good value as well. I mean, we, we always have our prices displayed on our website. Okay, so it's for clarity. It's like basically you can buy a suit and this is what it will cost. But as common sense would dictate, we say on this, this is where we start and what that will buy you is a good quality English worsted or something. All right. And then it goes up the scale. I mean, if you start picking cashmere's and all sorts of stuff, you're going to pay more. Um, the, the excess that we would charge over and above a normal price for this is really quite nominal. It's, it's not a lot. You're not going to lose sleep. Um, but I tell you what, it's a good, it's a good range. Have a look. Uh, they, they have everything online, Harrison's. Uh, just have a look at Moonbeam. Really, really good. Yeah. Moonbeam, super fine lamb's wool and angora. Fabulous. This I really like. Why do I really like it? Because my dad used to wear a coat like that. Um, I bet your dad used to wear a coat like this. Or your uncle. Look at it. It's fabulous. Glorious 12th. Porter and Harding. Lovely. Just absolutely timeless. Check. Okay, it's glorious 12th. It's going to last for years. It's going to be worn all year round. I've got one of these made up. We've got another one of these going through at the moment. Who's this for? Can I remember? Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is actually um, over in the US as well. And we're going to finish off with Smith Woolens. This is for a lovely client of mine who I've made for for donkey's years. And he is having a three piece proper bespoke dinner suit. Okay, so it's gonna have the scooped out waistcoat, one button, peak lapel. This is fabulous. This has to be midnight blue. Can you, can you see that from there? Or does it look black? This is a, is, is a great midnight because it looks black. I mean, I'm looking at it and it looks midnight in there. Made in England, Smith Woolens of London. Really, really lovely. We, we had the pleasure of making um, a couple of suits for the Oscars a while ago. And the chap that we made it for said, do you know what, we just want as black as we can get. That's all. So he goes, can you help us out? Will you deal with it? So we literally went to all the cloth merchants put a sample of all the black appropriate weight cloths on the floor in front of the big window and the amount of shades of black was unbelievable but I will say that Smith Woolens came up with the blackest of the black and that's what we picked for those two suits because it, it not only was it black it seemed to absorb the light there was no bounce back whatsoever um it's good stuff smith's been around a long time i remember them when they were a separate little company um and they used to have their offices in soho and you used to go there and you'd go down in the basement and all the cloths were there great great times when we used to have them like that um but this is this is just class i mean that that's all there is to it well, there you go, a little recap, but I just thought I'd uh, share a little something with you as we were talking about cloths and all things cloths. So follow me.
come over our creepy floorboard <clears throat> a couple of interesting things in this corner one look at this box okay I'm going to tell you a story about this box so we meet this chap in America and uh, then for his sins he seems to be a fan of red maids what he did he was doing some work on his property and a lot of New England there's a lot of wood around it's all stone here but there's a lot of wood around there and he was renewing I think it was the porch or he was certainly renewing a part of his house and I think this is called red oak and what he did was with the old planks he made us this lovely chalk box okay and it's beautifully put together it really is and he goes well I thought that might be quite nice for you but the interesting thing is a member of his family did a 3d printer of the red main logo but what makes this so lovely is a the kindness in doing it I mean how thoughtful is that but B his house was built around 1860 the same as Redmaids so that is lovely he graced it with a beautiful little um, corkscrew so I haven't got the heart to put chalk in it just yet but it's much loved and really appreciated and incidentally he's the chap who had the vintage reed and tailor cloth so interesting story now then can you get in here I don't know why we put this here but we just it's a copy and we just put it on the mirror um, but it's very interesting so red main 1860 is because we have records of Samuel Redmain tailoring in 1860 that's when he started his bespoke tailoring however he opened up retail in 1868 okay and I love this piece of paper so this is from um, 1968 when we celebrated our centenary first of all you man after my own heart if you read here it all started in a disused brewery how an appropriate place for a tailor to start and there's some wonderful pictures of the cutting room here look at all these cutters in there but the reason why I'm showing this is you know, we know our past you know our past but look at these names here Low and Donald and Co cloths of distinction you know congratulate Redman and Sons Limited for their centenary the Peebles and London so this was a little small company which has probably I haven't done my research has probably been absorbed into Holland and Cherry okay hair of England okay want to congratulate red men okay these fine woolens and worsteds okay again they've probably over the years been absorbed into the sort of big five I remember a lot of these when they were single companies but it's really interesting that these people are congratulating red because I mean of course if you you can see on here we had a great big factory and we made a hell of a lot of suits um, but it, it's interesting isn't it how all these tiny little private companies have have disappeared I mean these don't exist anymore they'll have got pulled up into the big merchants um, but we're still seeing that pedigree now that's what you're looking at there but it, it, I mean even this from 1968 um, a lot of the Reed and Taylor that we were talking about they, they'd have been absolutely flying then uh, we might post this article it was a big double page spread um, really quite beautifully centenary year of the famous Cumberland tailoring firm how nice is that anyway I'm not going to be around for the 200th but somebody will be red mains will be and how nice is that listen thanks for dropping in I hope you enjoyed that I hope I didn't ramble on too long I hope I haven't upset anybody there you go take care God bless <laughs>